What's up guys and welcome to another Space Engineers video. Today I wanted to revisit the mining rover concept. So this is the vehicle that I came up with. It's very minimalist, it's very lightweight, and it's very utilitarian. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing you may notice is that I have a single large cargo container. So what I realized, and this is with the realistic setting for capacity, this has a fifth, over 15,000 liter capacity. Now check this out. The medium cargo containers that I was using before, place one here, just over 3,000. So you have five times the capacity, but it's only like double the size. And it doesn't use any metal grids or anything, so it just seems a lot more economical. And if you're not really pushed for minimalism and space and everything, this is definitely going to suit you a lot better. So there's that and then obviously you have the connector and then I went ahead and added an ejector. If you're only looking for ores or ice or whatever and you just don't care about all that extra stone just poop it out. So as you're mining that'll sit there and poop out whatever undesirables you have and it works out great and the wheels are connected through too. Now to connect the cockpit I have an H2 generator which will come in handy if you're on Mars or somewhere where there's no oxygen. And then down here I have the gyroscopes right next to the large cargo container for the most efficient use of maneuvering with them. And then the ore detector is close to the ground. It's not the best place as far as durability is concerned, but you have enough clearance. I don't think there will be any issues. You only have 50 meters distance for searching with the small grid ore detector. So you really need to inch out as much as you can. And then you have two batteries. You can probably get away with one, but I like two for balance. And it just gives you that extra longevity. And then we have three drills in the front, conveniently connected to the standard cockpit. And they're in the perfect position where if you go around and drill, you'll skim the top of the ground and you won't actually dig into it. So even though it's not super duper fast, you can do that for a long time and you'll leave no trace. If you're on a PVP server, you can drill. In fact, I'll demonstrate for you. You can just drive around and drill. As you can see, the weight is increasing because I'm picking up ore. But if you turn around and look, it's like I was never here. Well for the most part, but you'll leave very little trace that anybody was actually here because of the placement of these drills. So I just wanted to demonstrate that. Also something very important to note, P is not only your connector, but it's also your parking brake for your wheels. So even though I'm hitting the gas, I'm not going anywhere for the parking brake. So no more runaway rovers like in the last video. Okay, so also with this large cargo container, I have the large connector on the top, so if you really wanted to, you could slap a turret up here. I personally, if I were not on a PvP server, I would probably go with a solar panel. Just because, free power, like so, oh. like so, it's free power, doesn't hurt anything, might interfere with your connector. But it, this build is very versatile, and it's built to be that way. So, let's go ahead and get into building it and how I configure it. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is start with a small grid landing gear. Place that, it'll connect to the ground, turn green, it's not going anywhere. And then you want to have an armor block just to elevate it a little bit. The idea is to build it off the ground and then when you're all ready and set for it to go, you grind everything down, it'll plop down, and you're set to go. So we have our little platform, and then I don't like to use my jetpack a lot if I'm on Earth. I just burn through hydrogen so fast. So I place this down as a little building platform. So now to get into the actual build, start with the large cargo container. You'll see you have one, two, three large grid connectors and then a small one. And then if you go the other way, you have one, two, three small grids and then a large. I like to have it where you have the large ones in the front and the back and then the large on top. 
This to me is the most useful configuration. Having a large connector on the bottom isn't too helpful if you're not actually flying or anything and you can always throw a turret on the top. So that's just like how I like to do it. And go ahead and slap on your connector and let's get an ejector up here. Alright, and that's it for the back. And now for the front, we have our H2 generator. And then the cockpit. Looking good so far. Let's go ahead and get the stuff underneath. I like to have two gyroscopes. The uh, small grid gyroscopes don't seem to be particularly powerful, but they're not particularly expensive either. So, two is a happy number. And then the ore detector. Alright, so that's it for the bottom. And then the drills. One, two, three. If you wanted to have another layer of drills up top, like if you were going to drill into a mountain and you wanted to create a tunnel, what I would suggest is using small conveyors, like so. You could very easily create an attachment point, and then one of these. And then you would need another one. And there we go. And then the same thing on the other side. And you could very easily put... Let me get situated here. You could very easily slap another row on here. And then you have your tunnel maker. But for the sake of this build, we're just going to have a ground miner. So, that's it for the drills. And now all we have to do is place the wheels. So the back axle is going to be on either side of the ejector. Let me go ahead and get the wheels ready. You're going to have your left wheel and your right wheel. So we're going to start with the left wheel. One there, and then I have the other one in the middle of the cockpit. That way the cockpit cargo point is still accessible. Not a big deal, just convenient. And also a main consideration behind that was I wanted this wheel as close to the drills as possible because that's also where you have a lot of weight and it's going to drag it down. So it's important to support that as much as possible. Especially because another thing, these drills do have a capacity, 3375. It's like having three medium cargo containers on the front of your, of your rover. So when they fill up, they definitely have some weight to them. Done with this, so I'm going to get rid of that. And that's it. That's literally it. The rover is complete. So we'll go ahead and grind these suckers down. Oops, need to be a little careful here. Uh, that'll buff out. So there's the rover. Let's go ahead and give you... Oh, I forgot the batteries. Hold on. Like I was saying, two batteries. One here. And then one on the other side gives it a happy amount of power. So, as soon as you power it, you want to do a handful of things. Let me fix this. There are a handful of things you want to do. You want to turn this off because it uses a lot of power. I'll demonstrate. The usage right now is 58 and a half kilowatts. Turn that off, boom. Instantly you have a lot of power saved. And then the ore detector is the other, other major thing. I like to crank the range up and turn it off for now. So, this is the list of components that you have in your control panel. I like to group together the wheels, which I'll do here, and I'll take them out of the terminal. I can configure them when I click on them. And I like to get rid of the large cargo in here just to free up some room. And then I like to group the drills together, which is very important because that will affect how we use them later, and get rid of them. Everything else can stay. I'll turn the ejector off connector can stay on. So let's go ahead and configure it. So something you may notice right off the bat, it looks a little scrunched in the front. So the way we're going to fix that is I'm going to go to my wheels group and under strength, if you don't know this, if you control click, it'll bring up this little menu and you can enter whatever value you want instead of having to play with the slider. So I'm just going to give it 20%. As you can see, I bounced right back up. 
In fact, now might it be a good opportunity to get rid of this. If I can. Maybe not. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. Get rid of that. So, we're strong enough. And honestly, I found these other settings to be perfectly fine. It hasn't inhibited me in any way. So, I raised the strength on the wheels, I grouped together the drills, and I cranked up the ore detector. So, now I'll go in to, I'll press G and bring up the groups section for the toolbar. And I'll set the drills to toggle on and off. And the ore detector, I like to have an on and off for that. And for the H2 generator, that way I can use it at my own pace. So that's all set to go. And now another possible thing you could have, I threw a camera on the large cargo container. It's not terribly necessary, but it can give you just another view. You can zoom in, look around. So if it tickles your fancy, go ahead and throw it on there. Camera. And then I'll group that right here. And your miner is set, so feel free to drive around, engage the drills, mine something. As you can see, I'm already picking up some weight. And I can drive pretty crazy. And it seems to be pretty stable. Just the distribution of it, the balance of it, it just seems to be a really good build. So I hope you guys really enjoy it. And thank you for checking this video out. Like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more. Let me stop this thing with P. And uh, yeah, happy mining.